All right, so last time we left off, we had a little bit of fun adding passive skills. Today, we are going to be tackling active skills, skills used in battle. So first off, I had a few things I needed to do from yesterday. All right, so first up, we are going to be saving and loading which skills are available to the player, which is fairly easy. We're just storing these as strings. Now let's see here. Save game controller. We had our create from current file, which is instantiating our player save data and our metadata. So as part of this player save data, I'm going to have a list of string skills when the time comes there's going to be other stuff I need to save here like the um, what skills and items are equipped the player equipment isn't in here either it's a very incomplete construct but But that's a very simple thing to, to go ahead and pop in. This is a get only. Do I care if they set this? Um, yeah, I might want to property change this later. Hmm. Nah, you know what? For now. We'll just go ahead and clear and add. So first things first. We need an MP bar. So we've got our, you see down here, we've got our, stam, our um, HP, and we have our stamina. I'm going to go ahead and put an MP bar. Though I'm not going to call it MP. I'm going to call it um, probably skill points or something like that. I don't really want to do too much, um, I guess, calling things magic. You know, I don't want to be too fantasy with this game. So I'm going to stay away from the word magic or mana or anything like that that's kind of more, um, more reserved for a fantasy setting. You know, kind of going with um, more of a, not a medieval vibe. I'm not quite sure what kind of setting. I mean... There aren't really going to be too many cities in my game. We're going to have some some smaller uh, settlements and encampments, but nothing, um, yeah, nothing too medieval with castles and stuff like that. So we have our player, And we have our stats, and our stats has MP, which I'm going to change to SP. And if you missed that, I did a uh, control period in Visual Studio over top of something you just rename. immediately enables the rename all references. So that just renamed it everywhere that I happen to be using MP, like on this property. Though it doesn't rename string instances, so this on property change needs to be updated. And then anywhere that's utilizing that needs to be, which I think is pretty much nowhere. Yeah, I don't even have this on my UI. So for UI, I think this is the. Um, well, I'm just going to go and look at the screen here. So scene, let's pop out here to my overlay. Player info, and player info has a
It really just has nothing on it. Hmm. I should really separate that out into its own component. As player info encompasses... Uh, there we go. Yeah, I need to separate that face button with text. I don't know why that's a child of player info. But I'm going to make a note and I'm going to come back and do that later. that this is being managed from the HUD manager, which I'm not a fan of. Yeah, player health slider, player stamina slider. Yeah, so I'm going to move this out. So we're going to go ahead and create our player status controller. There we go. And this guy's going to be responsible for managing our slider information and keeping track of changes to the player. So, slider using Unity UI engine. Uh, I guess I can just copy this from the HUD manager. I'm more or less just moving this in. I really need to sit here and retype things. So in this case, we're going to we're going to check in the start method to make sure these are attached in the editor. Uh, and these methods here that we're going to go ahead and steal. I like to put my methods underneath the unity to find in. Um, methods. Just keep things a little clean. Update all text and we have a property changed event handler. This will be from the player's base stats object on destroy. So what do I do on player initialized in the HUD manager? I essentially just hook up the um, the stat stuff. So we're going to go and take that as well. Set up player events. We'll take him. On destroy. Yeah. There's nothing else going on in here that's specific to the HUD manager. So really all this stuff in my HUD manager was just specifically around managing those health bars. So we're just holistically ripping all of that out. Uh, anything else you're yelling about? No, nothing of interest. Um, I like to fix my spacing while I'm in here. There we go. So we have our player health and player stamina sliders, which I'll drag in in the editor in a moment. Uh, we check to make sure those are attached in the editor, and if they're not, we just do a log error. And we hook up some events here. So if the player's singleton instance has not been set yet and we haven't run through its await call, which awake will set the instance, then we're going to, um, or rather, if those things have been done, we're going to go ahead and just hook up to the player stats property changed, which will tell us when the HP, MP, and now SP, or rather HP, SP, and stamina stats are changed. When the property is set, it'll fire this uh, property handler, 
it'll check which property was changed, HP or stamina, and I'm going to add SP, and it updates the slider values. And there is one other aspect of this I do need. No, okay, so we're setting value as a ratio of the HP to the max HP, so it's always from 0 to 1, according to the slider. If I wanted this to just to just set this to HP, I would need to update the slider whenever max HP is changed as well. So we keep the appropriate the appropriate percentage on the slider. Now let's go and build. Make sure I got no build errors, which I don't. So player info, you're gonna get a add component, you're gonna get a player status controller, and you get the health slider and you get the stamina slider dragged in and that is that for the moment I don't have a text display on here showing the raw numbers um, I don't know if I will later or not like we'll see and so the HUD this guy updated fine nothing's missing so let's just go ahead and play and make sure that everything's wired up real quick Unity always likes to take its time the first uh, the first play. All right, stamina is updating just fine. I'm gonna go ahead and wait for this guy to hit me. Fail the prompt, and yeah, my health went down. I'm gonna quick heal, which yep, yeah, drops stamina and increase my HP expectedly. So that's good. Let's go ahead and add our slider for player. SP. change the maximum SP, or rather, max MP to be SP. And maximum MP is going to be SP. And this property changed. Now, if uh, the maximums are zero, this will throw a divide by zero exception, but that's kind of a um, non-existent scenario. I'll, uh, I'll always initialize the player with at least some HP, stamina, and SP, whatever those values may end up being. to update our sliders when our maximum change as well. So if we add um, add new skills or you know whatever level up mechanic or anything like that, want to increase these values and change the slider accordingly. Um, yeah, yeah, that should be it. I don't need to do anything to update so I can go away. 
Now I need a slider over here. So because I'm going to be, you know, same look and feel and size placement, I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate my HP bar. And just to confirm, this is, yeah, 0 to 1. So it's always a ratio between those two things. And I'm fine with that. That's OK. So we're going to go ahead and duplicate that. And this is going to be SP. And he is anchored to the bottom left, and he's got positioning relative to that. So let's go ahead and increase you a bit. And I'm going to keep an eye here because, all right, so it's not affecting this guy. I'm a little worried about that thing being a child of this and me messing around with stuff. Yeah, so let's move you up. A little bit. And I want to put my SP between these two. Yeah, that's fine. So SP is going to be This guy's got a fill of green. We're going to make this a blue color. Uh, dark blue? Uh, kind of a light blue. We'll go, we'll, go with, we'll go with that for now. That's fine. Um, text. We'll call this the SP. Everything looks to be lined up just fine. Yeah. Hopefully the microphone's not picking up my stomach growling. I haven't had breakfast yet, though it's closer to lunch at this point. So let's see here. Yeah, let's go ahead and break this uh, relationship anyways. There we go. Yeah, so you're going to be in the bottom right. Pop you over there to the actual bottom right. And that should be OK. And I also noted last time that the right side text was set to guard on the overworld. Let's just leave that as none. And yeah. Honestly, these should all be none from the editor, and I should be setting this in code. But player SP is not attached, yes, because I have not attached it yet. Actually, I want to keep these in order. There we go. That doesn't affect the position on screen or anything like that, but yeah, just HP SP stamp, HP SP stamp. Like, you know, keep it uh keep all things equal. So slider bar goes in here. That's my SP slider. So that guy should now be wired up. And you won't be yelling at me now. True? True. Now then, I need to drain my SP and I need to recover SP. So I've got this um, test guy here that I use for all this stuff. So test startup. Used to do some initialization. It's not really doing much of anything now. And I've got test screen manager, which I was just grabbing key click events and testing functionality. Um, I think for this one I was testing my pop-up uh, window manager and my screen manager and making sure I could open windows in order, or close them in order. But I don't need that anymore. So what I'm going to do is if input dot get key up key code alpha 1 
player.instance.stats.sp minus equal 20 if input get key up to player.instance.stats.sp plus equal 10. So keep that easy. I'm going to press 1 and it'll drain some SP. And I'm going to press 2 and it'll restore some SP. So 1. Oh, yeah, because I don't have any um, um, base stats. Hydrate test data, yes. Uh, this dot sp is equal to stats dot max sp. This dot is equal to stats dot sp. So a hydrate uh, load test data. Is that being called still? Yeah, that's being called. So I need a this dot max sp is equal to this dot sp is equal to um, load 50. Sort of. Not quite. Not quite what I'm looking for. Forgot. I need to cast this to floats to get a decimal. Of course. There we go. And I need to put a cap on that. As you can see down here, I'm dropping a negative 130. And as I'm pressing two, there it goes. So yeah. Um, tch, 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 tch. Yeah, even though those are exposed, I do not really use it like that. I have some methods on on actor. that deal with add stamina, recover stamina, add health, and that can be a positive or negative value. And that then 
clips it so it doesn't go below zero and it doesn't go above the maximum. So. Alright, so that's an SP bar. Now, I'm going to close those test classes for the moment. Actually, 30 minutes is a good spot to cut up this episode. We got this nice little piece of work done. So next up, I guess I will implement some active skills, and I will uh, see you next time.